John knowing your sin, you're going to say, I love you. Even if you don't need to say it in your Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor had to smile on that one. <laughs> Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody.
Thank you. 
scripture will be from Romans 12. I'll be reading verses 3 to 10. And then Psalm 46, 10. For by the grace given, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesied, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is con contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously if it is leadership. Let him govern diligent, diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Yes. Psalm 46, 10. Be still and know that I am God.
your tithes and offerings. Amen. I'll make sure you do that first. <laughs> See my trustees I got. <laughs> Downstairs, um, the committee we hold the basket for love tokens. If you decide that you want to do a check, can you please make it to the marriage walker not the Mount Memorial Baptist Church? Okay. Uh, this is especially for him. It's all for him. Um, again, well worth it. We appreciate it. And let's all reflect on what he's done for this church. Amen. Good morning, Miller. And no, I'm not employed by the trustees. I'm the committee chairman. Okay, so but uh, this is your favorite time. Amen. This is your time yes. to get back to God, get back to Christ, get back to his house. Just a portion what he has so gratefully and graciously given you. Yes. So we just want to take the time just to pray for those who would like to give, but for some reason or another cannot give. We pray for those who can give, and those who will give. And we ask a special prayer, Father God, for those who have to give, but see no reason to give. So we pray, Father God, that you might bless these funds, that they may truly be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, and bless your people. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen.
at this church since 1942. Mm -hmm. the, the war was going on. And the rugby Germans was blowing up different parts of Europe. And I said to myself, I don't want to get caught up in a war or get killed. I came down and joined this church. I have never been a member of any other church but Miller Lamar. My family, my mother's family came from Virginia. And the reason why they came here, they said most of the people from Virginia, the area she lived, came to Miller Lamar or either went to Nazarene in Nice Town. But since they did the North Philly, they prefer coming to Melbourne Mall. Amen. And, and I, everyone that I meet when traveling, I used to travel quite a bit because of the, the job that I had. And I would meet people and they said, where are you from? And I would say, Philadelphia, North Philly. All right. <laughs> they would want to hear everything about Ridge Avenue, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> North Philly. But, what I want to say, I just love coming here. Amen. I love the people here. Amen. I love the people here. And during the week, people call me. Many people call and just check on me if I'm not here. But it's just a blessing to have a church family. Yes. I want to say thank you. Of the Most High God, yes. that the 
service of the Lord still goes on. And one that you don't stop us yet. And then last night, we got back in, and I'm still on Paris time. There are six hours ahead. Uh, and uh, so, five hours ahead. So I'm, I'm good and tired. I was up at 4 a.m., uh, and then 5 a.m. saying, I know my neighbor will tire of me. If you hear a noise complaint, you just tell them I was just getting ready for service at 5 o'clock this morning. But God bless you, but thank you all. And he sends his love. And I think he is flying back this week. So please keep him in prayer. He has a little bit of pain. He, um, he somehow... He forgot that he was 70 years old and he was uh, running and he pinched a nerve. And so he's in a little bit of pain, but he is feeling better. Amen. But he asked for your prayers. Amen. Amen. And then Sister Courtney Walls, the father, uh, passed away this past week. Amen. Amen. I think that's it. I, oh, next Sunday. It's Palm Sunday. Yes. Come to church, please. Okay. <laughs> and bring somebody to church. Yeah. And then the following Sunday is Resurrection yes. Sunday. Yes. That's Super Bowl Sunday for us. That is the highest Sunday on the Christian calendar. And so while we're planning Easter brunch and Easter dinner, and we're getting Easter bunnies together, let us remember that it was Jesus who got up. Yeah. Yeah. So, please, ma'am, please, sir, come to church for the next couple of Sundays in particular for this whole and sacred season and invite somebody because if you if folks are ever going to come to church they're going to come on Easter and Mother's Day and Christmas they're CMEs Christmas, Mother's Day and Easter I don't mind that actually as long as they get to church and maybe if you're nice to them when they come
1, verse 40. I plan to preach this morning from 2 Timothy. Oh. Uh, that's where I was going to go until I got to the pulpit. I was going to preach 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 1. I'm going to uh, revisit that at the end of it. For this morning, I, I want to go to Mark 1. Mark chapter 1. Verse 4. Mark chapter 1, verse 40. But I do want you to uh, read 2 Timothy chapter 1 so that by the time I get there, you'll know it. Because I think where I want to go with that is that and David, where we're talking about the that we'll, that we'll look at the last will of both Paul and David. The last will and testament of both Paul and, uh, and then the following week, David. I want to help y'all to plan with advanced planning for some wills and legacies. So we're going to talk about David, we're going to talk about Paul, but that will be at the end of April. So I'm getting y'all ready now, so y'all know when somebody who ain't got no will, we're going we to set you straight by the end of April. Mark chapter 1, verse 40. There came a letter to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt. Thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, and said unto him, I will, semi-clean, be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, come. And, and immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was clean. And he straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away and said unto him, See thou say nothing um, to any man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded. For a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places. And they came unto him from every quarter. You may be seen in the presence of our God and from. And there came a leper unto him, beseeching him, and kneeling down unto him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Our Father and our great God, giver of every good and perfect gift, sustainer and of all. We thank you for this day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Life is sometimes unfair, but God, you are eternally good. And though we tire and we weary, God, we thank you that you never get tired, that you never get weary. And so, God, I pray now that in this preaching moment, that you fall fresh on me, that some might be saved and others might be strengthened. Speak in new and fresh ways, that somebody might leave this place saying, I got just what I want. I got just what I need. 
from the Lord. Be glorified now. Be magnified and exalted. In the powerful and precious providential name of Jesus. Amen. 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 According to our text, we have a letter who has already been pronounced unclean by the priest. The leper's only interaction was his weekly checkup with the priest. To go and show himself to the priest, he was not supposed to have any interaction with anyone other than the priest. Not his family, not his friends, not Co-workers, colleagues, he didn't even have any touch. But the text says, this man came to Jesus. He decided that the risk of being rejected was less than the risk of staying. Neglected. He decided that what the law could not do, that Jesus had the power to do. So he wrote the protocols so that he could be healed. If this morning, my sister, my brother, if you are hurting, if you are feeling helpless, if you think that the situation that you're in right now is just bleak and dark and hopeless, you ought to come to Jesus. Yeah. If you have been forsaken, come to Jesus. If you feel me, you've been forgotten, come to Jesus. Yeah. If you're in trouble in the day and uncertain about your tomorrow, you ought to come to Jesus. Yes, Lord. If you are striving for success or if you're struggling with suicide, you ought to come to Jesus. So whether it is in your marriage or in your money, if it's in your job, if it's in your home, whether it's a friend or foe, come to Jesus. The leper, the Bible says, must be seeking him. He was requesting him. He was pleading him. He was urging him. And some virgins say that he was begging him. So in other words, he was, he was seeking Jesus and petitioning Jesus. The text says he was falling down on his knees before Jesus. He positioned himself in this place of desperation and despondency. He had moved to the point of seeking mercy. Jesus, I tried everything else. And here I come. It doesn't matter who's looking at me. It doesn't matter what they're saying about me. Jesus, I'm coming desperately to you. Beseeching, urging, and begging. 
all right with me. Why should I come to Jesus? What makes him different from anybody else? Confucius and Buddha, Muhammad and Allah. Well, Jesus cares about you. Jesus understands how we feel and knows what we're going through. Our God wrapped himself in human flesh and identified himself with human kind by journeying with us for 33 years on earth. He is the God man. As a man, he identifies with our pain. As God, he has the power to placate our pain. He is the hypostatic union of God. He is 100% God and he is 100% man. He gets you. And he's got you. He cares for you, I tell you. I wish you would just encourage somebody and say, he cares for you. No, 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 no. Find somebody else and say, he cares for you. Jesus had compassion on this level. Jesus cared so much about what this man was going through that he was willing to do for the man. But no one else was willing to do. What was that? He stretched out his hand. And the Bible says he touched him. Jesus wanted to let this man know that I feel what you feel. I heard how you heard and that your pain has become my pain. So instead of contamination coming in, virtue went out. Instead of Jesus being in the Bible says that the man was made clean immediately. This touch, this touch, this touch by Jesus. Jesus. So if he wanted to, he could have just spoken a word. He didn't have to touch the man. He could have just simply said, be clean. The Bible says he stretched out his hand. This means that this man was about to receive a divine blessing. Yes. Peter's in-law was healed by a touch from his hand. Jesus healed two blind men by a touch to their eyes. The deaf man was healed by a touch. The widow who had lost her son unto death, unto Jesus, came through the funeral procession and touched his coffin. Even as Jesus was facing a rest and death, when the apostle Peter cut the man's ear off, the Bible says that Jesus healed the man's ear with a touch. Yes. Is there anybody in church this morning who needs a touch from the master's hand. Anybody here who just needs a divine blessing, a divine touch from his hand, put yourself in a position so you can get a touch from the master's hand. And even if he does not touch you, watch this, you may still be close enough where you can touch the hem of his garment. He may not touch you, but you can still touch him.
up. If you're broken now, we'll lift you up. If you feel like you can't be, we'll give you strength to run on. Won't he do it? Won't he will? Won't he do it?
Let me tell you a story. Sit down. Sit down. Let me tell you a story. And I got to leave you, but I want to tell you a story about a man who had cats. He had all kinds of cats. He had big cats. He had big cats, lepers, and lions, and cougars, and cheetahs, and tigers. He had small cats, Siamese cats, Abyssinian cats. Persian cats. But one day the man decided he wanted to find a stray cat. His wife said, said, man, you crazy. You out of your mind. And he said, no, I got to go get me a stray cat. And so he went on driving, trying to find a stray cat. And he found one sitting right at 22nd and Jefferson Street. Found a stray cat, put the cat in the car, took the cat into his house, watched the cat up. He got the cat some shots. And a few days after that, he fed this cat the best food he could find for the cats. And it was one day the man came back home and the cat was gone. The cat had left the house and the man searched all over for this cat. He couldn't find this cat anywhere. Here, kitty kitty. Here, kitty kitty. Come on, he got some sardines trying to find this cat. But he couldn't find the cat. And his wife said, man, I told you, you can't change that old Tom cat. They said, I told you that that cat was no good and would not be able to appreciate your kindness. That's all right. I'm going to tell the story anyway. And the man searched on more for this straight cat and he could not find him after a while. I guess my wife must have been right. One day as the man was sitting down at the table, he heard some scratching at the door. So he got up and he looked and he said, what's going on here? And he found that old tomcat and the cat wasn't by himself. But the cat, he had a bunch of his friends with him. It was a bunch of other straight cats.
to extend the invitation from one stray cat to another. Back in the old church, when they had 
have a motion a second and who are you to motion and second and third somebody thank God for Jesus because the Bible says immediately he was cleansed and guess what beloved immediately you too can be made ceremonially clean you ain't got to tarry for it you ain't got to wait until you come up with tongues speaking in tongues and custom English but you can get it right here right now if you're here and you are saved but you don't have a church on then why don't you come and be a part of the fellowship of the gap he made a way